And I love Chris Sims. I think he's great. He was a lefty, like, or he still is a left-handy, like a left-handy, a lefty like me. But this list that has Daniel Jones ahead of Justin Fields, I just can't take it seriously. There's nothing about this that screams reality. Daniel Jones has had a nice couple of moments in the NFL. He's shown some athleticism, but he's not the quarterback that Justin Fields is. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the college pedigree for starters. You know, Justin Fields we saw on the grandest of stages beat one of the better teams in college football. He went head to head against Trevor Lawrence and outplayed him. And then he was a first round draft pick as Daniel Jones was as well. But did Daniel Jones play to Duke? We didn't know much about him. Sort of athletic. He is athletic, but he's not Justin Fields. And Chris Sims, I love you, but somebody needs to get in your ear and be like, bro, don't do things like this. There's no reason. I know that it's May, and I know that you need clicks, but you're the son of a former NFL quarterback. You're you yourself, former NFL quarterback. You do not need to resort to these tactics. You, Dan Orlovsky, you know better. And it, And I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. And with that, Sammy, let's start the show. Turn up your volume, because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast, with Adam Ray. Trying to cut it back, Justin Fields making magic happen, there goes Fields, touchdown! The Sickest Chicago Bears and Fantasy Football Podcast. Sports entertainment like no other, it's gonna be sick. Welcome to the Sick Podcast. It is me, Adam Rake. We have got a great show for you today. Joining us in just a matter of minutes will be one of the newest members of the Chicago Bears, Kari Blasengame, will be joining us to uh, talk about the upcoming season, his, his first impressions of being a member of the Chicago Bears. Can't wait for that. We talked to him a little bit in the green room. You're going to love him. One guy that I can tell you right now that I do love, and I didn't get a chance to talk about this on Tuesday night. We will talk about this later. Bayless Jones Jr is an outstanding human being. I am so excited. I am so excited about him, and I can't wait to tell you about my experience running into him at the NFL Rookie Premier over the last weekend. You guys are going to be thrilled. Thanks again to everybody who was here on Tuesday night for uh, taking to the rank. Jim McMahon, excellent. I know some of you, I saw you, you know, eh, you know, he was eating, I'm out, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I understand all of that. That is Jim McMahon. Okay, there was nothing about Jim McMahon in that appearance that disappointed me. I know that people, you know, what he was talking about with social media. Listen, if you didn't know that already, like, come on. Uh, Number two, uh, he was going to eat a hamburger and I was not going to be offended by that. It's Jim McMahon. He can pretty much do whatever he wants. He apologized afterwards uh, when we saw him. He's like, hey, sorry about that. It's like, bro, I I don't care. You could do whatever you could have been playing backgammon. I would not have cared. We had Jim McMahon on the show. But let's talk about what is happening right now, because uh, I would like to welcome one of the newest members of the Chicago Bears. I'll tell you one thing. Playing fullback in the NFL, it's a special talent. you got to be a special person to do it. And when you go to Chicago and you play the fullback position, you are the kind of person that the entire city is going to rally around. And I am very excited to welcome Kari Blazengame, Please, so happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Just, okay, just cool, fine. Cool. I'm good, I know you're in, you're in a new place. You just moved to town. It looks like you're getting, you and your wife are getting settled in the, into the Chicago suburbs. How's all that going? It's going well, man. Soup, uh, over at the team, got to set up with a, with, a, with a realtor, Kim, and she helped us find a place. It's been smooth. It's been smooth. We're just kind of getting settled in. Getting our getting our feet planted, so it's been a good it's been a good transition. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the guys on the team and meeting everybody, meeting the coaches, and just getting the norm and building the chemistry. So it's it's just it's been fun so far, and I'm excited about it. You should be excited, and I, I and honestly, like if you think about it, you played at ten, for the Tennessee Titans. You went up against Matt Eberflus, so he's seen your game. Like he's had to scout your games. He's had to game plan for you. 
when he brings you in, that to me says a lot. Like when he's going up against the former opponent, like he knows what he's getting when he brings you in. Uh, how has that relationship been like with him so far? He's a great coach. Uh, just when he gets up in front of the team, you can tell he has a, a aura about him. He has a, a a leadership quality about him, very CEO like. But you get, but still a football guy, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's uh it's been really cool to to watch him operate and to to be a part of what he's building here. Do you think, uh, obviously, you know, going up against the Colts over the last couple of years, and I don't know that you had a personal relationship with him, but was there something about his defenses? Because we've seen, you know, a lot of those guys play really well. They all swarm the ball and things like that. When you played the Colts, was there something about going up against his defenses? Yeah, because you knew they were going. You knew they were going to bring bring their bring their hard hat with them. Uh, guys like Matt Adams. Uh, uh, Franklin, I can't remember his first name, but he was a linebacker on their team. Uh, we had some run-ins at the Titans, so you just knew that you just knew that they were going to come out, they were going to hit, they were going to run, and uh, it was going to be a physical game. So uh, you knew that that was their identity, and I think he brings the same thing to this Chicago defense. So it's going to be exciting to compete against their camp and just to watch during the season. No, and that's one of the things that speaks to Chicago. As much as we'd love to have that high-flying offense. You know, at the same time, people love – they love the defense. They love running the football. Having a fullback in this system, you know, for a lot of people, they get excited about that. You know, we love our quarterback. We love our young quarterback. We also love running that football. Was that something that kind of attracted you to the Chicago? I know it's a business and you want to go – you know, you want to get – want to make money. I mean, it's a job. But was that one of the things that kind of attracted you to Chicago as well? Yeah, I mean, I had a conversation with Coach Gessie. uh before I signed, I believe, um, and just kind of got a chance to talk to him, uh, hear what he thought I could do in the offense. So, you know, just just feeling the opportunity would be there to come up here and compete and, and have a chance to just put it on film and, and play football. You know, that's at the end of, it is a business, but at the end of the day, the guys who put the helmet on, we just love to play football. We love to compete. So. Uh, yes, it is a very exciting thing to get the chance to participate in this offense with the identity that Coach Gessie laid up. Yeah, that's one of the things that you notice about Green Bay. I think that, what was it, Andy Yanovich was there for a while. Um, they've had some success with their fullback, so now it just seems like this system. How has the system been? I know that you would have missed LaFleur. Uh, he had left the Green Bay by the time that you got to Tennessee. But what right. is this system like? I know I know you're, you know, you, you're, it's your first week of practice. But what has it been like being in this system? How do you think that that's coming about? Uh, it's it's been fun. I mean, staying away from from like scheme and everything, not trying to give too much, but no, no, like, no, yeah, just, just like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a listen. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to sound smarter than I am. You can you can dumb it down for me. But how has it been going so far this week? No, it's been going well. Like uh, when I just talk, think about the personality uh, that the coaches want from the offense. I mean, you can feel it when they get in front of the team, like CMO. O line coach or coach Walker, running back coach, like there's a there's a there's a distinct personality that you can tell that they want from the offense, which is you know being fast, being aggressive, attacking, you know. So it's it's just been fun to try to test my metal at learning the new playbook and uh, whatever they're throwing at me, just being able to see if I can adapt to it and uh, really just throw it out there and. See, see what I could do, you know. So uh, yeah. it's it's been it's been fun to 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 have the opportunity to compete in this offense and learn it and try to not I wouldn't say adapt to the mentality, but just embrace right. the mentality that they're that they're bringing. Yeah, well, I mean, you have that mentality. I mean, you watch Tennessee Titan games, you know that you have that mentality. I don't think that anybody needs to be sold on that. I always like to, when you have the fullbacks, the relationships that they always have with the running backs that they're blocking for. I work with LaDainian Tomlinson. I've met Lorenzo Neal. Seeing their bond always fascinates me. What's it been like over the last couple of days meeting David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert, these guys you're going to be leading the way for? How's that relationship starting to grow? It's definitely starting to grow, but I will say when I first met them, it was kind of like a, I'm not saying it's like love at first sight of it, like, you know what I'm but it was like, yeah. you instantly gel with guys and you, you, you fill out, fill out their personalities and the way they work. And um, 
just what it's like to be in a, in a, in a room with them, in a meeting room, in a locker room, in a weight room with them. And I mean, it's been, it's been really cool. It felt like a, like a puzzle piece that just fit for me at least. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm excited to, to block for those guys. I'm excited to get them to their goals and have them rush for a lot of yards, score a lot of touchdowns, celebrate the end zone, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm just looking forward to putting everything together. We're putting in a lot of good work right now. The opportunity to put it together and, you know, just continue to grow is going to be exciting, but we have a lot of fun together. We enjoy each other in the room and uh, it's just, it's just really cool. I'm getting chills just hearing you talk about that. There is, but there's something to be said about that. Like there's some times that you walk in and you just instantly click with a person and it's great to hear that, you know, and it's cool. You know, I I love hearing that. I know that you, you said that you want to get those guys a lot of touchdowns and I do too. I want to, I want to see a lot of that, but I also selfishly, you know, I do a little segment on the NFL Network called "That Helps No One," and that means from a fantasy perspective, not a lot of people are playing the 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 the, uh, the fullbacks in fantasy. Although I like to start Kyle Use check here and there, and uh, you know, I'm I'm disappointed that I've never been able to call your name before. I'm looking forward to that this season. Who do we need to call? I want to make sure that we get you into the end zone this year, and not just as somebody there who's just going to spike the ball after David Montgomery scores. Kari, I want you to score a touchdown. Do I gotta do I gotta do I gotta get Getsy on this show and let him know that <laughs> we need to reward you with a touchdown? Hey, look, if you get him on the show, put a bug in his ear. Put a bug yeah. in his ear. But you know, either way, I hate to sound political or or like I'm trying to, you know, toe the line, but I really do yeah. feel like whatever, whatever helps the team win, you know what I'm saying? If if it's David scoring 20 touchdowns and Khalil scoring 15 and Darren 10 and all those other guys and hey, up like, I mean, I don't care. As long as we celebrate yeah. in the end zone, that's, that's fun. You know, I've adapted to the position and I've embraced it. And I really, that's that's fun. I mean, it, there'll be opportunities, I hope. But uh, I don't really care who it is that's in the end zone as long as they got a Bears decal on the helmet, you know. 100%. No, I, I back that up completely. And it's not, I, I understand what you're trying to say. Like, I don't want to be political, but every time I talk to a fullback, from you know current generation to former generation, they all carry that same mentality that I think that you just have to have that to be able to play that position. Talking to Daryl Johnson or Lorenzo Neal or anybody like that, they love when the other guys score. Although it's not terrible when you score yourself. Like I, nah, I just not terrible, to, not terrible. I want you to get one against the Packers. I think now I've now talked myself into not only getting you a touchdown. I want one to be against the Packers, and I want it to be in a big moment. But we'll work on that. There's there's plenty yeah. of uh, time to uh, to talk about that. What about the quarterback, though, Justin Fields? Now, you probably heard me talking about this at the top of the show. Chris Sims thinks he's worse than Daniel Jones, and we don't have to get into specifics like that. What has been your impression of Justin Fields over the last week? Or two? Hard worker. Hard worker. And I think that's all you really have to say about him. Like, good teammate. Really cool dude, but he's going to strap it up and he's going to go to work. And I think that says a lot about a guy as a football player, especially a quarterback, you know, who's in who's in the, who's in the gym on his off day, who's, you know, mm-hmm. just putting in extra time. You know, I, I've, I've seen him do it. He's not doing it for show. He's not doing it because people are watching. He just works hard. So I'm excited for him. And uh, I like to see guys like that get rewarded. So I, he works hard and he breaks it. I love him, but does he ever smile? Like, I don't know if we've ever caught him on camera. Every once in a while, we capture a smile, but do, does he ever smile at practice? Absolutely. 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 He loves the game. You can feel it. You can feel it from his competitive nature that he loves it. So, of course he does. Of course he smiles. I love his – but I love his demeanor. Like, it it just seems like he exudes leadership. I mean, what was it like? I, I just feel like he's that type of person, again, like – you were talking about meeting the running backs for the first time. You instantly click. Sometimes when you meet somebody, you can just you can feel their leadership qualities come through. Has Justin got a little bit of that? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm kind of not tapped into like the draft and stuff anymore, and like where guys go. And I remember watching him in college. And so when I got here, I didn't know last year was his first year. Like just. Yeah. Just from not so like just meeting him, I was like, okay, this guy's been in the league for about <laughs> two, two or three. Like you could tell, like I knew it was around, you know, the early stages of, of his career, but I didn't know he was. I didn't know it was just his first year last year. So that's just how he carries himself. He he's got a, he's got a maturity about him. 
So. Yeah, there is there. I, you're absolutely right because at least as an outsider, it always feels like you know people wanted to poke fun at him because some of the pictures of him holding up the jersey, like he's just kind of all business, and you're like, well, that's fine. Like some people are like that. Like they, you know, people have their own personality, and that's fine. Yeah. I will ask. I do want to ask though. You know, you hear a lot about this. I go on a lot of shows, and it always feels like I have to defend the bit, which is fine. I don't mind doing it. You hear a lot of noise from like the national media or people who don't really follow the team that there's this perception that there's not a lot of weapons offensively on this squad, which I think is hilarious. Do you guys talk about that? I know you've been there just a short time, but is that something that's that you guys talk about? Do you I hope you laugh about it or is it something that people carry as a chip on their shoulder? If guys are listening to it, they probably carry it as a chip because I've never heard anybody say they felt disrespected by that or guys really just show up and come to work. They show yeah. up and they, and they work like they really like guys work and they, they love being out there and they go, they go hard. So I don't, if it's, if, if they heard it, it's a chill. Nobody's ever talking about it. Like, Oh, they're not giving us respect or anything. I've never, I hadn't felt that. And I mean, I feel like the proof's in the pudding guys know that. And, when we strap it up in September, whatever date it is, they'll have the chance. And I think guys are itching and waiting for that chance. No, I love that. I would prefer that they not deal with that. I think that's that's good for the fans to know. And I will throw myself in that. Even though I'm a media person, I still am in the fan camp. And I, you know, I'm glad that you guys just ignore that because it's nonsense and nobody needs to really focus too much about it. One guy that I really do like, though, that I think that has a an ability – to take a big leap this season is Darnell Mooney. Have you had any chance to kind of interact with him? What have you noticed about him? Because I, I know that there's a debate where whether he's a, a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two or Dan Orlovsky thinks he's a wide receiver three, which is completely ridiculous. What were your impressions of him if you've gotten a chance to uh, to see Darnell up close? Well, I like Darnell. Uh, one, because he's from Alabama. He was at Kansas <laughs> City High School. And so we chopped it up about that. Uh, and he's got some juice. He's got some yeah. juice. He he made a move off a line off the line the other day in practice. Really impressive. Really shifty. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could do stuff like that. But you know, <laughs> his release was really it was crazy. It was nice. Uh, so yeah, he's got some juice. I mean, wide receiver one, wide receiver two. Who cares? He's got some juice, and he he can make plays. And I think like he's done in the past, he's just gonna. He's gonna do it when it when he gets the opportunity. But I like him a lot. Cool dude. Like the whole the whole chemistry of the locker room is like I don't think yeah. that there's one dude that I've met that I've been like, oh, he's an asshole. I don't oh, know nice. if I say that on the podcast. Listen, but like you I met, haven't you met you met Sammy before the show and he's he's offended now because he's a nice Canadian boy. But no, I'm just teasing. You say whatever <laughs> the, you have, you can say whatever you want. You drop we work blue here when we need to. I like the raw emotion. Um, I like hearing that, but yeah, so you, the, everybody's cool. There's no asshole. See, I'll say it too. Once yeah. I, now I've given you the, the green light to say that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't met anybody that's like, God, it's going to be terrible being a teammate with that guy. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. Yeah. And I think it's fun because even on the other side of the ball, you know, I kind of get my chip on my shoulder when guys like chirp a little bit, like you might, yeah. they might, defense might make a play in, in practice and they'll chirp and, you kind of wait till you get your chance with them. But those guys, I mean, they compete hard. And it's fun when you compete, you know, when it's a – when guys just throw it out there, you know. So, yeah, I guess you asked the question about Darnell and I brought everybody else into it. Bring I, everybody I into it. Listen, yeah, I yeah, want yeah. I want to – no, I love the fact that there's nobody that you're calling out. I know, um, like, Cole Komet's another guy that people talk a lot about. Greg Olson was on Good Morning Football uh, this week. And was talking about Cole Komet taking a step forward. What do you think? Like, was he obviously? So everybody's cool. So Cole Komet's obviously cool. But is, have you have you noticed him on the field? How's he? How's he coming along? Uh, yeah. I mean, I know I'm making you the expert on everybody. I don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I'm not. I know it's I'm not like, a, like a tight end. Like I, I, I when I'm watching that. film, I'm watching us in the running back room and myself trying to improve. But like, yeah, I mean, Cole, another guy, like especially. In phase one and phase two, when we're running, like he's one of those, those guys pushing himself. You can tell he's pushing his limits. He's intentional about his work. So I mean, 
I feel like all of these questions will be answered when we when we strap it up and 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 you know get to go against our own guys and other teams. And but no, I'm excited for him. He's he, he, he's a good football player. He's a good football player. He's a good teammate. So I'm excited for him. No, I'm excited. Well, I'm listen. I'm excited for you. I was. Uh, I also noticed uh, following you on Twitter. Your your you your your avatar is you posing next to the number thirty four, which is obvious to all Bears fans. How what what's that like? Because I I you know that that mean like I'll I'll just tell you, Kari. Like that that means that like Bears fans see that, and we appreciate it. You know, you weren't alive when Walter Payton played, and stuff like that. For you to go out there and make that known or put that out there, that means a lot to Bears fans. Like it, it just it just does. What was that like for you? Now, I wasn't I wasn't alive when he was playing, obviously, but I like when I fell in love with football like, as a kid, the TV stayed on NFL Network. So through that, I was watching NFL films and I was like getting to watch all the tape and you know interviews with these guys. And so Walter Payton obviously is a legend, right? That that's, that goes without saying. So just getting being able to like walk in the halls and see like the place that he built and other guys built, you know, him, Mm -hmm. Gail Sayers and uh, Brian Piccolo. I remember it was a middle school. I think it was. And I read a book about Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers in their first year. Yeah. And then like, it just, I don't know that that when it, when I popped up and I saw his name and I was like, Oh, okay. Wow. I remember that. So like being around all this history and all this, uh, what, what, what would you call it? Like just just the history and the the aura, pres- yeah. There's an the aura, aura there. and the prestige of the program. Like when me and my wife came for the visit before we signed the contract, uh, I, I told her I was like, man, it's like a football Vatican. Like it's like a museum, yeah. you know. And it's like it's like wow. Like you really when when you step into a building like that and see the names, like you really know. Okay, I got to live up to something that's you know that's got some. It's got some meaning to it. And it's got some depth. So, yeah, man, Walter Payton, HBCU legend. Yeah, to the league, did his thing. You know, Gail Sayers. I watched. I watched. I think I watched one about him, and I think it was a. I hope it's not the wrong quote, but I think it was a quote from him where he was like, "All I need is an inch of daylight." And yeah, yeah, that the, the like an inch of daylight quote from him, and it was like that was just I don't know. I just remember that from childhood and always watching those films. So. Just being in the same places as these as these guys were, it's like it's just huge, you know. No, it's amazing, and it's amazing to think about that too—the rich history of the Bears. And you know what? Like we we hate the Packers. I hate the Packers. Well, you you hate them now, but um, yeah, but them like now. teams yeah, like but but teams like that—they have that story tradition, and there's something about that I think that it's cool, and I think that the Bears do a great job of embracing it. And I know too when you when you when you see the players really get into it as well. Cause there, again, like there is a rich history. I understand, you know, for a lot of people, I mean, even the fact that, you know, who get, and this is no disrespect to anybody else. Cause the fact that, you know, who Gail Sayer, the fact that you were talking about Brian Piccolo, I mean, that that's the one that, that knocks me off my feet. Cause my dad used to always make me watch this movie called Brian's song, which had Billy D Billy Lando, Billy D Williams played Gail Sayers in a movie with another, I'm so sorry. People are going to be mad at me. But uh, it was there was a famous actor who played Brian Piccolo, and I know. Listen, when this comes out, when this episode drops, people are going to be very upset with me. I might have to go back and edit it because they're going to. He's a very James Con. Oh my God, thank you. Uh, so so happy I remember that. But like that was a movie we used to watch, and there was a song that like when you would hear the song, it would make you emotional. So the fact that you read the book and you knew all that stuff about that, that's pretty cool too. By the way, um, Walter Payton's fullback was named Matt Suey. So Matt whenever Suey. you, Matt Suey, he wore number 26, I believe it was, because it was one of my dad's favorite players. So whenever you get an opportunity, drop that in an interview with one of these Chicago guys, uh, dude, you're going to be, a, you'd be a legend forever. <laughs> They'll love you. Okay. If you if, okay. Okay. I appreciate you giving me the, the points right there. So free points. The, the Piccolo thing for sure. Uh, Matt Suey is another good one. Never put ketchup on a hot dog. And you are on your way to being a Chicago legend. That's all you need. That's that's my those are my tips to you. Write those down. Just make a mental note at least, and uh, that's all you need to know. And then the the, the fans are going to embrace you. 
So what's wrong with ketchup on a hot dog? Just, just you, you know what? Listen, Kari, I they it's just something that I've learned from birth. Like I don't know, I don't know why. Okay, there's a thing. Gotcha. If you, if you get a Chicago dog, they put a tomato on it. So it's always like kind of weird. Like okay, it's not a tomato thing, but it's a ketchup. I I honestly I wish I had a better answer for you. It's just one of those things that's ingrained into you. You're like this is this is what we do. Like okay. you know you're. When you, as your parents are raising you, there is just no ketchup around. You know, as a as a as a respect for them, I just follow that tradition along. Although my kids love ketchup, I don't know what to do sometimes. What else? So, what have you uh, have you been able to enjoy Chicago at all since you've been to town? I know that you again probably live near the facility and everything, but have you been able to kind of enjoy everything that's happening? Yeah. So my wife, uh, my wife and I went down there for lunch. Uh, Last weekend, I think it was, and we wanted to go to the Bean, but it was just too cold. So yeah, uh, we decided to come back home. I went down. One of my uh, friends, he coaches at Kenwood High School, and so I went down there and got to meet some guys down there. And he just kind of showed me around. So uh, I mean, we haven't been able to explore it like super heavy, but yeah, I've heard that that summertime Chicago is crazy. So uh, when it warms up, like for good, for good, we're gonna get out and. You know, go see some of the crazy spots. You got some recommendations? Well, I always have recommendations depending on what what you like, what what you're into. You know, I was a you know, I've I've got the bars. If you need to know the bars, the pizza places, you do. I mean, and I will tell you this as well. This is an important note: is that you'll hear a lot about deep dish pizza, and Chicago's known for it. Giordano's, Lou Malnati's, Gino's East, all that stuff. Approach deep dish pizza the same way you would approach Thanksgiving dinner. It's good for once a year. You okay. only do it when people are visiting from okay. out of town. Otherwise, and I and, it, and I was it doesn't matter what suburb you're living in. There is a place very close to your house. It, I don't even need to know where you live because this is true of every place in the greater Chicagoland area. There is a place that's like a pizza place slash liquor store slash whatever, like all like a dairy, like whatever. Like, and they all serve thin crust Chicago style pizza. You hear a lot about deep dish. Once you start having the the thin crust Chicago style pizza, you'll never go back. You'll never okay. accept anything else. Okay. You'll love it. Tavern style pizza. You got to go seek it out over the weekend. Go check it out. Again, all you got to do is hit Yelp or whatever. Type in a place. I'm sure it's excellent. And you go out there and you'll love it. Oh, and by the way, you also have to go to Wrigley Field. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of people don't know this. The bears did not start playing football at soldier field until 1970. Before that they played it, they played at Wrigley field. So when you want to talk about Gale Sayers and everything, when you're at Wrigley field, you're in the place where Gale Sayers played when you're at soldier field. That's where Walter played. Wrigley field is where, uh, Gale Sayers played. Okay, cool. Cool. Good little fact. Good little fact. They might bring that up in a team meeting or something. So. 1970. Yeah. I remember that day. Remember so that make day. sure, yeah, make sure you know all that. Make sure you have that down. Um, I can send you a list later. And uh, you know, there's not a quiz or anything like that, but I want you to want you to keep up with that. But uh, but before we before we go, like what is so what do we got next? So you just finished practice, you guys have a little bit of a break. Uh, what are you gonna what what's the schedule like? What do you got going on? And uh when do you guys finally go back to camp? I'm assuming it's the end of July. Yeah, that'll be the end of end of July when we go back to real fall camp, like real football with pads and everything. So right now we're just in OTAs. We finish up, I think, like middle of June. So mm -hmm. a couple weeks from now, I guess. Oh, so, you got another uh, session. Okay. Yeah, so we got this uh, Memorial Day weekend off and then like a couple more weeks, maybe you know, a, a mini camp. And then we'll have some weeks off and come back, come back to fall camp, and then you're in it until February. So. Yeah, so, yeah, a late run, a late run into February, hopefully. If not, listen, we understand. Listen, we're behind you. Uh, I want to thank you for being able to stop by today. I know you had practice, and I know there's probably a million other things you would rather do than to entertain some doofus like me, but I really appreciate it. Um, appreciate your time. But remember, tavern-style pizza. You might want to hit up Portillo's, too. I know. Oh, okay, great. so I've heard about Portillo's. Okay. You're like the third or fourth person to tell me about Portillo's, so. That's all I, it is. 
Okay, Portillo's as well. That you know, it's one of those things you'll hear people tell you like, "Hey, th there's other places that are better." And there might be, you know, locally owned places. You always want to hit those up. But at the same time, you got to hit the institutions as well. Just like with just like with a deep dish. Like pick one of those. I would say Giordano's would be my choice. Uh, hit one deep dish, do a Portillo's run, and then you're on to tavern style and all that stuff, and you'll be off and running, and you'll be ready to go. Cool. But uh, but I really want to thank you uh, for being a part of this. Thank you for uh, taking the time. Hopefully we can do this again at some point. Uh, want to keep progressing, and we'll get and, and again we're going to get you into the end zone this season. So we got a lot to look forward to, but I wanted to thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for having me on, man. It's really, really cool, man. First, it's my first show, really. In, it uh, is. In, in Chicago. So I did a little radio thing the other day. It's my first first show. So I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you wanting to have me on and having me on for this little time we got to kick it, man. No, I loved it. And uh, next time we'll we'll dig a little bit deeper and everything. But you know, I just wanted to be, I just wanted I don't want to be overwhelming in the first. You you can't come off too strong. But uh, oh, and by the way, when you see Valus, tell him I said what's up. That's my guy. We'll do another another Alabama kid. He's from he's from Mobile, so he's so hey. nice. Yeah, he's you a know, cool dude. He's you know what? I'm gonna kid. I'm gonna tell the story. I was gonna I would listen. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm gonna make you listen to this story. Okay. It's important. It's important for you to hear this. So okay. we hate we hate the Packers. So, and I'm sorry if you need to go. I apologize. Oh no no, no I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. If your wife's sitting there being like, "What is this idiot talking about?" Be like, "I don't know. He's telling me." Oh, no, we good. We good. We good. So I I'm I'm at the rookie premiere over the weekend, and Christian Watkins was there, and uh, Romeo Dubs of the Green Bay Packers, and I sat down with them, interviewed them. I'll be completely honest. Both of those guys are lovely, like very nice guys, super funny. Uh, Romeo went to Nevada. I'm a UNLV fan who likes the Bears, so we were never destined to get along, but they were delightful people. And I'm like, okay, I took a picture. You know, whatever. Like, they're good human beings. Like, it's football's fun, but they're good human beings. That's awesome. And I remember thinking to myself, like, if Valus Jones Jr. is not a cool person, I'm going to be despondent. Like, I'm not. <laughs> and then I, I went up to him, and I just told him right off the bat, I told him that we were going to be best friends. I said, Valus, we're going to be best friends. And he's like, okay. And I'm, I'm sure you met, and you talked about meeting him. He is so nice. He was so delightful. And we just had a great conversation. And uh, if we didn't walk away best friends, I think it was pretty close. But now I'm just rallying around him. Like, I was kind of defending him a little bit when they drafted him in the third round. Everybody, all the draft experts who know everything were saying that that was a questionable, questionable pick or whatever. And so I get in defensive mode, defend him. And now that I've met him, it's even worse. So I think he's a great guy. I don't know. You said you, said you met him a little bit? Yeah, he's uh, like one or two lockers down from me. So, yeah, he's a cool dude, real, real smooth Alabama cat, man. That's that southern hospitality you're talking about. He's, he's yeah, he's, def he's definitely a cool dude. He's definitely a cool dude. Super real, smart. Like I think he's he's got his what he got his master's degree from Tennessee. Oh, did he? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, like he he went to USC, did the full run through USC, and then they had the COVID year, so he got an extra year of eligibility. Then he was getting his master's degree. He's a grown man. Like he's. He's a, he's a man amongst boys, so uh, we're excited to have him. But we're excited to have you as well. And so uh, I could not be more thrilled uh, to have you aboard, to have that fullback return to Chicago. Like, it's a good time. I think a lot of good things are going to happen for the Bears this season. Even though it's a first year, a first coach and everything like that, there's a lot of excitement building. And a big reason why is people like yourself. So thank you so much for being here. And again, I'm glad this was your first one. Turn down every other one. Be okay. like, nope, we're, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go out, no, no, no. Get yourself over. Go out. I'll, I'll spread the word. Once people see you on this and they see how cool you are, then you're going to get inundated. But uh, I'm glad we were the first. Uh, we would love to have you back at some point. But uh, enjoy your time off. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we'll see you soon, hopefully. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. There he goes. Oh, my gosh. Kari is amazing. I, I'm so excited. What a great week. That we've had we had Jim McMahon uh we have Kari Blasen game like we had a great week here at the sick podcast big thanks to Sammy 
and Anello for going ahead and, and locking in those two interviews. I could not be more thrilled with the way that this is going. Thanks to everybody who's been, you know, supporting the show. And actually, I'll go back to uh to, to last week's show with Ill Will. That that video that we did that's up on YouTube is the most viewed video that we've done as part of the sick podcast, even or at least it's challenging draft doctor Phil and people like that. So we really appreciate all the support. And we thank everybody who's been joining us. I know this is going to be another one. I felt great about this show. So appreciate everybody. Appreciate Kari for being here. And uh, so for everybody with the sick team, thank you very much. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Please stay safe. And uh, we'll see you next week. And so, Sammy, why don't you just go ahead and play us out? And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Adam Rank on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.